All right. This is now my third, well, technically fifth time trying to record this, but the other two, I was nervous to see if it worked. The first time, uh, I got interrupted by my ringtone, so I had to turn the sound out because I forgot. And next time, I must have moved the camera in a way when I was recording because it was only recorded this way. And I'm not going to post that to YouTube. I want a good quality. So, for the third time, I'm reviewing the past. Alright? I know. See, I want to review this my way after watching the Nostalgia Critics review because his was a total negative review. He hated the movie. Alright? I understand it. To each their own. Alright? But to me, I have always loved this movie. I watched it, okay? Uh, back in the day, there was a time where ABC was airing two episodes of Smallville late night on Saturdays, followed by a movie. And one night, it was this. And so I've been a fan of it. I bought this a few months ago off of eBay. So I'm glad that I finally get a chance to watch it because I haven't watched it since then. And I still love it, man. I still enjoy it. And I'm going to be fair in my rating. I'm like, all right, I know it's a bad movie. I know it has its flaws. So I'm going to be fair. I'm not going to give it a 10 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10. I'm going to be fair. Okay? <clears throat> so, the basic plot. is that three times. The basic plot is Pez Vargas, played by John Leguizamo, is a scam artist. All right, living in Miami. With his two best friends, Ninja and Chubby, played by Freddy Rodriguez and Aerie Spears. His girlfriend, uh... Xanthia, played by Tammy Townsend. Doesn't say that on there, but <clears throat> yeah. And, um, so, on this particular day, this scam is a scam that hinges on him being blind. Where he pretends to be blind. And, uh, they're doing a coconut trick. And he, uh, a man named Gustav, played by Jeffrey Jones, and his psychic Leo, played by I don't know, uh, are looking for the perfect Puerto Rican specimen to hunt. And Gustav finds him, and it happens to be the guy arguing with Pest. So when uh, Leo looks in the binoculars over at where Gustav pointed, he sees Pest and thinks that's who it is. All right. Uh, Pest also works at this Chinese restaurant where he pretends to be Chinese. This boss figures out he's not and fires him. But Pest gets out of it by pretending that uh, he has a pet, a pet duck named Quacky and he couldn't find it. And just he, and he pretends that it's one of the ducks that they've cooked. So he basically gets off the hook. He goes back to the back. And he calls the Scottish Mafia, who are looking for him because they own 50, he owes them fifty thousand dollars. And I've done this so many times. Uh, there's a joke that I like. I'm getting sick of talking about it, but uh, there's, there's a there's a joke that I like um, where uh, the leader of the Scottish Mafia, Angus, asks, "Do you know what day it is?" And Pest says, "Sean Connery's birthday." Angus repeats, "Sean Connery's birthday." The guys behind him who were playing bagpipes before he took the phone call said, say, Sean Connery's birthday and proceed to play He's a Jolly Good Fellow on a bagpipe. Look at that. Funny. To me, it left my ass off. Alright? So, Leo orders Chinese food to get past to Gustav's mansion, right? And... Gustav is wants to hunt the Puerto Rican specimen. Well, uh, it's not the what he what he asked for, but he says to do the tests anyway. Pest fails every single test. He convinces Pest that it's for a scholarship, and he fails all the tests. He's not going to give him the scholarship. He's going to kick him out. But Pest is so annoying that Gustav decides he's going to hunt him anyway. And this is where you know he signs everything the contract. And Pest is introduced to Gustav's son, Himmel. Uh, and Himmel uh, tells him, my father's going to hunt you. He doesn't believe him, but then he goes to talk to him. He's like, you're going to hunt me. And then, actually, in Australia, it is. He needs a Puerto Rican for his collection. And he explains. He had hunted every animal 
that could be hunted by the time he was 30 years old. So he went on to hunting humans, and the last human specimen he needs is a Puerto Rican. So, past uh, tries to get out of it, but he says, "Oh, if you survive 24 hours, you get the the uh, 50 minute, the fifty thousand dollars." To Ching, so he agrees to it. They drink this little. Uh, it it says it's a tradition. They drink it. That comes into contact later. Comes into context later. Uh, they go out, they start to hunt, Pest takes a shit, and that's what makes them hear him, because he's loud, you know. And Himmel accidentally fires the bazooka at Pest, presumably blowing him up, because all they find is his shoe, but uh, Gustav believes he's still alive. Pest makes his way back to the mansion, where he tells Himmel, you're going to get me out of here. Himmel eventually agrees, and... um. They take a boat where they both end up puking, and then a seagull poops on Himmel's face, blinding him, blinding him, and Pest swims away back to Miami, where he meets his two friends, you know, Chubby and Ninja, coincidentally, and he tells them he's being hunted. They don't believe him. They say take a swim. He's like, I had to swim for twenty hours, for twenty, for twenty, twenty miles. That's what it was, 20 miles. The 20 hours, how the hell? For for 20 miles. But he, she's a woman and decides he's going to go in the pool. But then, Gustav finds him somehow. I don't know how. He just finds him out of nowhere. Then they explain he has a tracking thing in his underwear. But you think he would find it by now. And if he's in the water, it wouldn't work, right? I mean, it could be a waterproof tracker, but come on. In 1997, pff, come on. Anyway, so they escape, and it's like the only place to hide is his girlfriend's house because he promised that he'd go to dinner. So he shows up just like an African with a dashiki and an afro and wearing things or whatever. And uh, <clears throat> um, so he does that. And, and I know it, it's very racist, but it, it, it's supposed to be a funny movie, okay? If you don't have a sense of humor, don't watch it. Okay? It's supposed to be funny. Just just try to be open-minded, alright? Even though I didn't really laugh at this part. I just thought it was stupid, but still. Um, <clears throat> so Gustav, the, the tracking thing in his underpants begins to overheat because he's sweating balls like I am now. And it like catches fire, and so he has to go crazy... To, to, water on or whatever he goes and he ends up going to the toilet he sits down on the toilet and he goes I'm like okay how low is the toilet how high is the water because you unless because he didn't even look like he was like butt in it like if, if you sit on it without a uh 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 the the rim and you just fall in with your feet sticking out it didn't even look like that so i don't know how that would work but uh before it burnt out the last place it said it was was the, you know, I forgot her name. Malaria. No, that's her friend. Wakia? Whatever. The girlfriend's house. Okay? Ah. The girlfriend's house. And, um, so Gustav shows up. He uses the train gun. He trains all the people in the house, except for Pest. Even Ninja, when Ninja tries to come in to save them. Here's the thing, okay? Gustav tries to sneak in. He walked. Uh, uh, Chubby and Ninja are sitting outside in the Jeep, right? And they're having a conversation about if aliens abducted Ninja, would Ninja have sex with an, with an alien chick, right? They're having a conversation. Gustav walks right in front of him, but Chubby doesn't notice until he tries to sneak into the house. He walked right in front of you! Even though. He, I even said that. He's like, hey, you go look. I'm like, what do you mean you'll go look? He walked right in front of you. You didn't see him? He walked right in front of the Jeep. How stupid do you have to be? So, and even Tranks Himmel as well. His son, Himmel. You know that. Even Tranks Himmel as well. So, and then I'm going to get into the confusing part here. This movie's all movies confusing. But, so, Pass gets out with um, Chubby and they 
they drive off to some party where they knock someone out with a subwoofer, literally, boom, 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 and take the tickets for the private party. While in there, um, to find them, Gustav calls the Scottish Mafia and tells them, you know, about Pest and everything, and they, you know, they start to track down Pest, and they find Pest at the party. Well, Pest calls Ninja, who wakes up from his tranking, and he has Ninja meet him at the karaoke bar there. How he got in, I don't, because, like, I, I don't know, because, uh, like I said, Chubby and Pest had to use passes, so how, how Ninja, Himmel, Gustav, and Leo got in, I don't know. Maybe Leo has a secret pass, I don't know. Or not, you know, Gustav, whatever. So Himmel's at the karaoke bar, and so when Pest goes in dressed as a Japanese man, he tries to get Ninja's attention, but Ninja's not paying attention, he's covered by women. Which, how that happened, I don't know. And he gets, so Pest is forced to get up on stage to sing karaoke rendition of the Bonanza theme song, which I didn't know had words until I first saw this movie, I'm like, Bonanza has a, Bonanza has, Bonanza theme has words? Really? And then, and then, but the Bonanza, I don't know the, I don't know the, the words, I don't pay attention. But then Gustav comes in and he goes, does that Japanese man look familiar to you? He was like, no. He goes, that's Pest Fargus, you idiot. So they did the chase scene ensues again, and then they tried to hide in a Jewish synagogue. That was before this, I guess. I forgot to say that in the other one. But so Gustav calls Pest and says, your family is lovely. He has his family. His just his parents. His brother's not there. They saw his brother at the beginning, but not here. Yeah, have his parents. His, his girlfriend and her parents and his girlfriend's friend, Malaria. Now, they were driving a Volkswagen. And the last time we saw them in a the Volkswagen, they had Himmel in the back, passed out. How the hell did they get all those people in a Volkswagen? We don't see them in another car. They're just all in the boat. How the hell did they get them in a Volkswagen? They're not going to fit all in that Volkswagen unless they're piled on top of each other. It made any sense. So they get there. There's like some weird thing where Pest is trying to distract Gustav down in a boiler room. And then when Gustav comes back up, says, Pest, I will kill your girlfriend and you don't come out. So, supposedly, presumably, it's supposed to be Pest, comes out dressed in, in this, all this garb, covering his face and everything, and it's chubby, because it's, you can tell it's chubby, because it's, he's taller. But then, like, uh, he's like, come closer, and he's like, any closer, and we'd be any closer to her, and we'd be intimate or something like that. But even though he's, like, just far away, he's on the steps, he slips down the steps, he's like, hey, I meant to do that. And, uh, <laughs> oh, I'm having the joke, I'm sorry. So, Gustav reveals that he poisoned him, which was in the drink they drank, and it takes 18 hours to work. There's no way it's been 18 hours, all right? Because I guarantee you, it was sometime in the late morning, maybe 11 o'clock, noon, that they started the hunt into the drink. Because think about this, all right? It starts with him in the shower. He has breakfast. He goes down to the beach, you know. He talks to his girlfriend. He talks to his friends. They do the scam, right? He goes to work. Well, there's I also a scene where he plays basketball, right? With the, with a fat kid and two other kids that are picking on him. That's in there. He goes to work. He gets fired, but he doesn't get fired. He delivers the food to Gustav. They do all that testing, right? They do all that testing, which could have taken a while. Then they agree to do the hunt. All right. Am I? Is it eight hours? Not eighteen. Am I just remembering that now? It's, 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 it's eight hours, isn't it? I've been bitching about this. Well, it still wasn't 18 hours. So if, 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 if it was eight hours, then it makes more sense. And I'm a stupid idiot. <laughs> I think, and now I'm, I'm thinking it's eight hours. Now I'm thinking it, okay. It 
Eight hours could work. Because he said he had it from 20... Okay. Eight hours, eight hours might work. So they took it being eight Who knows how long it actually took during the hunt to go back, to be on the boat, to swim all the way to Miami, then all the stuff they were doing in Miami at night. And it could be like late, late, late at night at this point. So it, it could have been eight hours, right? So it mostly starts working 15 seconds. That's it, the clock. 15 seconds to watch. And he supposedly dies, right? So the next scene go, has uh, Gustav going to the bank because that's where he has $50,000. And he told Pest where it was. Stupid. Turns out, Pest is still alive. He gives him, he, he opens the safe deposit box and his note that says, answer the phone. And it's Pest who's alive because he puked all the poison up while on the boat with him on. Which, to me, wouldn't he have shat it out first? Maybe it doesn't work that way. I don't know. But, he puked it all up. And, then he he got all the money by pretending to be a German ambassador. And he tries to call her, that's not, that's not a German ambassador, that's Pest Vargas, that's Pest Vargas. And, no, I'm a German ambassador, I'm not doing actually anything, but it's like, okay. So then afterwards, and he doesn't wait that. Okay, the cops come and take Gustav away because they tell him about all his illegal activities, you know. And oh, I'm just thinking of something myself, okay. When, okay, so the cops take him away. Pest takes off his, his uh, costume right away. And she wait a little bit because the cops could see you do that. And they're like, wait a minute, you're not the German ambassador. But it's a movie, whatever. He hops in the Jeep, which has uh, his girlfriend, his two friends, and Himmel is driving. Right? Because he gets uh, Ninja back from the Scottish Mafia after they took him as collateral. Forgot about that part. But he got Ninja back, and they're all in there. Himmel is driving. Himmel's part of the crew because he's there behind because Gustav shot him. But he's wearing a bulletproof vest. But he still shot him, and so, you know, he stayed behind. Here's the thing, though. When Pest implicated Gustav, any accomplices would go down with him. That includes Leo and Himmel. Even though Himmel had never actually, like, participated in any of this stuff, he was with his father trying to pursue Pest through the entire night. Right? He's an accomplice. Whether he was holding a gun that, you know, he his fingerprints have to be on some of the guns, right? I'm just saying, he got off scot-free. Okay, now that I think about it, maybe he is a, he is innocent, but he was still going along with his father. He got some kind of implications at some point. I know he never killed anyone, never fired a gun at anyone, except for the accident of Bazooka, but still. Anyway, that's how the movie ends. The, the song, which I love, Wudu Mambo, sung by... Uh, John Locazamo plays the beginning and the end, and I love it both times. It's the instrumental version is the theme song for the movie, and I love it. Guys, I'm gonna be fair. Uh, a normal score for this would be a five because it's so stupid, so dumb, so idiotic. But I rate on enjoyment, so because I enjoy enjoyed this movie, I'm gonna go up a little bit more and I'm gonna give it a seven. All right, a seven for the pest. So, what are your thoughts on the pest? Do you think it's worth a seven? Do you not? Do you like this movie? Do you hate it? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe. And hopefully, hopefully this is the last time I do this. And as always, love, peace, chicken, grease.